Now I'm building a top for my case. I have these pieces that uh, I ripped off when I made the top. They're a half inch square. And I've got them marked left, arrow up, right, arrow up. And the back, pointing up, and the front. And what I've done here is that they're about a sixteenth over. So I've lined them up and put the piece and marked where the edge of this raised portion is. I've done that on all of them. This is marked uh, front arrow up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a tongue and groove thing. and So I've marked all the way around with my square how deep it's got to go and I've just kind of estimated here about a 3 sixteenths tongue crossed here. I'm doing a lot of this by eye. And I'm going to cut this areas off and this is going to be the tongue and then I'm going to cut a groove in the front and back pieces so it'll go through like that. So I'm going to cut the tongue just like doing the dovetail. I'm going to cut the tongue first then use it to mark where I want the groove. And I'll just pare things down with the chisel until they fit in there and everything sets level. And then I can put the top on and these will all be lined up. So yeah, time to put a top on the old box. Trim it, trim it to fit, so I can get my good fits. I'll cut my groove. Few saw slots and chisel it out now. One corner's done. The back piece for the top had a little bow in it, so I'm trying to take it out. I left it like this overnight and see how it looks. Well, that took a lot of it out. A little tiny bit. All right, one more night like that, I think I'll take it out. And I gotta finish these other two corners. I'm going to be ready to glue up. I've got the framework for the top glued up now. That uh, wax paper in the corners doesn't glue down onto there. Now I can uh, level it all out after the glue dries and then I'll glue the top down onto it. I've got this uh, my top framework glued down on to the top and I actually laid it on the bottom and clamped the top to it and then after the glue dried I drove these screws, I drove uh, number eight by three quarter inch screws from the framework into the top and plugged them so there won't be any plugged holes on the top just on this frame here and I added a, a thing here for my cleaning tools to go into and now I'm cutting my mortises for the hinges putting them four inches in from each end and I'm cutting a mortise to set that hinge down in there level with the wood and I've just been doing it with my knife here and my chisel. I'm going to take that out to that hinge 
sits down in there flush. And I gotta do the same thing in the corresponding position on the top. To get these mortises marked in the top, I set the hinges in the mortise that was, I had on the bottom and put a spot of hot glue on it from the hot glue gun. Set it in there and then just lift the top down over those lips so that it set on there when the glue hardened. I took it off and marked for the holes and marked the edge with my knife. Now I'm using the chisel and the knife. Just to take some wood off of here. And then I'm filing it out. Now I'm inletting these brass campaign corners. And I'm cutting down into the sides here first. And as it goes in this way, this edge goes further and has to be trimmed, and also that edge. And now I'm lining this so I can go down. It's a shame to do these tongue and groove corners, and it's all going to be covered up with the brass. I suppose if I was doing it again, I'd just do a mitered corner. But so I've got it in the here. Now I'm tracing this around so I can set it down this way then I'll have to trim these edges as it goes down the thickness of this which is about 40 thousandths define my edges first wood. A lot of cross grain cutting on these. That was pretty hard going. I suppose I could get a Dremel router and it would be quicker. But I'm doing the old way. Just shaving a little bit at a time by hand. Eventually those will fit on. Using a little inletting black on here to show where my high spots are. I'm working it down with my scraper. I'm taking it down so it's just slightly below the surface. And they're perfectly flush or I can feel just a little wood and then I'll take it down with uh, the block and some 320 paper to where it's all uh, level and then I'll polish the brass on the buffing wheel I think these are pretty much the same but I'm uh, I've got this one marked BR for back right so then mark BL for back left so I'm each one goes in its own spot. That's pretty nice. I like that. So, one down, seven more to go. Oh, I have a little piece of chip out here. I found it. I'm gluing it back in. I look better than just packing shavings in there. So. Stop me for a while until it sets up. It's just really when you're getting these little shaving next to some of this wavy grain, the pieces will chip out sometimes. You just try to find them and glue them back in. And I found out that uh, there is a little bit of variation in these. So to get a perfect fit, you have to fit each one to each corner. 
because I tried uh, the one, tried this one on the other corner and it didn't fit perfectly. It didn't fit as perfect as the other one, so you have to fit each one. I'm gluing these little uh, inch and a half square by quarter inch thick pieces of boxwood in the corners. Three-eighths uh, from the inside edge. And I've got some little round stick-on felt pieces that are going to go on these. And I'll probably raise it up about three-eighths of an inch off of whatever table, whatever sitting on, but it won't mar any table. And it can pretty much sit on anything. Well, that far end of this corner was below the wood a little further than I wanted it. And I just, as I get in a too big a hurry sometimes, I took a little too much wood off up there. So I'm just gluing in a piece, eighth inch thick piece of boxwood. And then I'll pare that down to support that. I could have taken the wood down to it, but I just didn't want to take that much off. I just got to watch it. And sometimes this crop, when you're going cross grain with a sharp knife, it takes a lot off. So I got to just uh, back off a little bit. I saw it on the back two corners. <laughs> By the time I get around to the front, I should be pretty good at this. And uh, I wasn't going to do the bottom. I was just going to do the top. But then I've been looking at campaign furniture. And, and they do this on all the corners because it really protects the corners. You know, even though the bottom is uh, it's going to be raised up and... I could put just a corner around there, but these things really protect the corners, and they're for things like this that are thrown around on a ship and get beat up. The corners get all beat up if you didn't have these brass corners on there. So anyway, these brass corners will beat up whatever else is around it. So mainly all the stuff had these corners. Not all of it, but uh, I think some of the better stuff. There's my real nice fit. There's my little shim. Doesn't hurt anything. It's going to be covered up by this. It's a leveler. So yeah, that's pretty good. I got all my corners on. Now I'm block sanding uh, with 220. I got my hinges on. Stop hinges, they stop the lid right there. So I'm taking everything down even and taking the wood that went through these corners and other corners are high, just kind of even leveling everything out. It's not going to be perfect because these are stamp corners, the edges aren't perfect. So I get as good as I can get it. Then I'll finish it up with two, three twenty. And then she'll be ready to finish when we use the true oil on it. And now everything's sanded. So I'm taking the corners off and I, I want the screws to go back exactly the holes they came out of because I've done some filing and some sanding down of the heads too. So I made this here. This is the bottom placement and this is for the top and the back front and, the, and I, I pull these two screws out and I put them in here. These two will go in here and then here. These will come out. These two will go in here and these two will go in here. So I have this board with these holes in it where all the screws are and then the top I'll do the same thing. Just so I can get them to go back in the same holes. I'm putting the locking mechanism into the gun box now. Got this lock. Skeleton key and then there's a little plate here that goes in the lid. I might make my own plate though, a little heavier stuff. Just goes up and then hooks. But it's a full mortise lock so I have to cut a mortise here. A big square hole for this to set in. So I'm setting it, this has an eighth inch piece behind it, I'm setting it back a 32nd here and then I'll cut out a 5 16 mortise. So I've got a 3 16 drill and I've got it marked a little bit deeper 
because I don't like to set down on this flange. And I drill those holes down on the drill press. I put a paper towel on the drill press bed. So now it's just a matter of taking these center pieces out. And I'm undersized, of course. And then taking out the And then taking it out to these lines so that this just slips in there. Then I'll inlet this down into here. This little tool is pretty good for that. like a slot. So now what I'd have to do is locate where to drill a hole for the key, so area there, transfer it to here, then go down with a vertical line and just measure down. I'd drill a small hole first, 3 16 hole exploratory and see how close I am to this, and then I can enlarge it with the knife so that this key just goes in. And then I can make my slot for, for this part. And then I'll, I'll wind up putting that little covering plate over it. And I'm going to bore these holes out. I've got some number six three quarter brass screws that I've been using on my hinges because I don't like these little tiny screws. So I'll be drilling that out and countersinking it for these number six brass screws. And and I can put the plate in on the top, but I'm thinking of making a, a little thicker one out of that thicker brass so I don't have so much play in this area here. Well, it came out pretty good. And I'm just going to start enlarging that with my knife. So it's the size of the barrel of the key, then I'll cut my slot 
and I've drilled my holes for my, my uh, carrying handle here. I got this really cool early style brass handle and I'm going to through bolt it. I don't trust the screws because it's lifting this whole weight of both of these guns. So I'm going to through bolt it. I'm going to sink the screws. I'm going to sink the nuts into the wood. What the heck is it? I don't think it'll be much more secure than the screws. I don't like the weight on to be on, pulling on screws. And the, a lot of the cases had the handles on the top, but then again, you've got even if you threw both the handle, you still you're trusting to these screws and your hinge screws to hold all the weight of this thing. And that just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. So I'm bolting my handle through the front. I've made this 95 thousand thick brass and this is probably only about 60 thousand so yeah that'll be a much more substantial strike plate latch plate for this and there won't be so much play in the log oh. so I got just in there right there where it works the freest and I'm going to put a spot of hot glue on it and then close the lid on it and let it set and that should put that in the place it wants to be in to be in right into the lid this is the top after two coats of true oil, first coat I saturated under the corners and where all the inlighting has been done. And then uh, I rub that down with steel wool and then put the corners on to the second coat with the corners on. Because oil will go into any spaces in there and, and seal it all up. And here's the bottom, that's in that popular stain with the special walnut stain and then the rest of it is not stained but, you know, it's, it's, I like the colors in the wood and the figure so this is the natural colors of the wood that's a third coat of true oil and I'm starting to put in some of my cushioning areas here let's finish on the box four coats of true oil on everything fly on the top rubbed out in between with the uh, ultra fine steel wool so now I'm doing the linings and uh, for padding I'm using I have some of this it's some kind of packing felt they pack glass doors in and it's it looks like about an eighth of an inch thick but it's actually it's 70 it's around 80 around 80 80,000 70 to 90,000 and it's pretty cushioning and then uh, I've got this is the felt I'm using and it's uh, 30 some thousand I think yeah about 30 thousand 32 so it's about a 30 second these are a little less than an eighth that's what I wanted for the top I wanted a cushion top about a quarter inch so I made this and I've got two layers I've got it marked F for the front where it goes in like that. And I just used some of this uh, craft glue, tacky glue. And I've got some other glues. I've got some contacts here. In some places it would be easier to use one kind than another. And I have some spray adhesive. I've got pieces I can lay them out and spray. That's what I did. I laid these out. I sprayed them, glued two pieces together, glued the felt on it, and overlapped it. In here, actually, this 
trying it out. It fits in there pretty nice like that. And it it barely it sets against the guns but not real real bad. It's uh, I don't want to rattle around that's why I want a cushion lid. And you can see where it hit on the frizz and in the hammer right there. And I took out because I didn't really need it, I took out the pieces I felt under here because it rides on this steel anyway. One layer of the green felt will be fine in there. So this I'm gonna put a little extra padding around here just so that's not so loose before I put the green covering on. And so that's what I have to do now. I have to line it with felt. So I'm gonna start I'm gonna start off on these ends. Uh, little cubby holes here because that'll be hidden and by the time I get out in here I should be maybe a little better at it but that's it's gonna be pretty nice and we're out pretty nice on my lock that works real good so yeah for some of these pieces I'll probably make patterns for this piece. I just cut me a piece, it's long enough. And I'm gonna go in with the X-Acto and I've got to trim it off where I've got a piece here with holes drilled for my cleaning tools and round rod accessories. So I'm just gonna cut it there. Trial and error. Cut and fit. Like pulling a bolt. A little of this in there. Strictly up here. I want that stuck real good. Okay, we're right here to get that step. Okay, first piece of felt is in. I made a piece. And piece here, it's going to go from here. All around there. I had a piece here. I got a little more room on that gun. That's a smaller gun, 50 caliber. And glue that on. Then I'm going to kind of try to fit these over the edge and trim them as I go. So one piece does the, the whole thing. At least that's the plan. So far it's going okay. <laughs> I had these holding this in with the glue dried. Just an extra piece there for a little more padding and less play right around the trigger guard. This one down so they won't be a they won't meet together in the corner because this is what you see when you look in so this goes around there across the bottom and I'll mark it my exacto knife in this far corner now this one will get trimmed off just at, at the bottom there. Sharpen my exacto blade, it's just have enough time with this stuff. As long as I can see it, I can chop it off. Then these will just be a short tab that'll go over the edge there. This time I'm gonna use good old contact cement. Could get ugly, and it probably will before it's over. Anyway, I'm gonna glue some of this stuff down. 
That should do it, I would think. Okay, here we go. So next I'm going to try going with a piece around from here all the way around where the butt cap goes and then cut it and fold it over this should go all the way over and do that side and this should cover this and mold around here <laughs> and there goes I'm kind of favoring this craft glue. It's a little more forgiving than the contact cement. I know I'm going to have to trim this a little bit. Glue in place. And I'm going to have to cut a chunk out of here so this will fold around and this will overlap it and overlap that. That actually can go there. There's really nothing there. And if one around there, then this will fold over here, and this will be cut out, and this will fold over there. Because that's the plan. This stuff's pretty flexible. I really like it. What I like about this craft glue, it's you got a little bit of time to play with it. It's all going to blend in pretty well together. It's, these compound areas are hard to form. But anyway, because I want this to go down into there, I'm going to spread a little more glue on that. And, uh, and then I'll be working that back, back there. That'll actually cut too. And I might have to put a little piece in there. I find I can. <laughs> I can cut a little piece, put some glue on, and stuff it in there. And you will never know, this will have to be trimmed. Okay, I'll trim the excess off that, and that'll go in. And I'll have to put a little triangular piece in right there. If I repaired a place over here, I had some space, I put a little glue in and just fluffed up some fluff off of this and packed in there and put it. Wax paper over it, pushed it in, <laughs> it was fine. Well, this is where I'm at after my first day of felting the pistol case. It's done in there. And I've got the piece ready for here. Let's put it in just like I did the last one. It's cut to fit along the bottom there. And I got a split there, so that'll go down. That'll just go down the two sides and over the top. And I'm going to have another, then I'll put the side piece here, then I'll have another piece that'll go, a one inch piece, probably about a seven eighth piece, that'll go through all of these and over into here. And I'll put the bottom in there, and then I'll just have, I'm going to do these, and I, I'm taking three pieces, one here. And uh, another piece, I'm going to end it from here to there, and then another piece from there to there. I'll have to make patterns for those, except for these, these will be just squares. Anyway, so I had to, I, I like to through bolt all my handles, so I, before I put this piece in, I got my, uh, my nuts inlet into the wood there. So these are actually machine screws. They're, I believe, they're number six flat heads, but I slightly domed the heads. 
And uh, yeah, because it's going to cover the felt on this side is going to cover up the nuts. But uh, yeah, I like a through bolt. I just don't like to trust the whole weight of the whole thing if I'm carrying it by this on screws in the wood. See too many of them pull out. And that would be a total disaster. Oh well, no, I've got everything done except for the bottom where the pistols go. So now I've got to make patterns and each side's going to be a little bit different, but uh, I'm going to make some cardboard patterns out of pieces. Just piece them up and glue them in there with a hot glue gun. Hot glue gun warms up. I'll just glue those pieces together and I gotta make another piece for down here. What I'm thinking of doing is just gluing this in and then splitting this with the knife and folding the sides down and just put one little last strip right down the middle there. I reversed it so any of the marks will be on the bottom. I'm going to try some of this spray adhesive. It looks pretty darn good too. I think I can clean it up later. Okay, I'll do the same thing over here and it uh, should be felted. Well, that was a learning experience, but uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Like I say, it's not perfect, but neither is the box or the guns. I found an old toothbrush to clean it up, so I got these little 
And it's going to be used, so it's going to be getting crap in it all the time. I'll be having to clean it up. It's probably going to end up ripping some of it out and redoing it. can always do that, but at least I know what it takes to uh, fill the gun case now. <laughs> I have to trim these down because they're a little tight on the top. You know, this is pretty finished. I've got uh, felt feet on the bottom, my little squares there. And this is what it's all about. There's no way I could ever afford to buy anything like this. <laughs> I have to build it. But it's been really a fun build and well now I'm shooting them. And I've got my case set. And uh yeah, this, this is it.